بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أفضل المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وبعد I praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى for being here and I start by thanking him for allowing me to be with you speaking about the beloved the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم our messenger and the messenger of the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I would start, <clears throat> I would start by saying the following. First of all, Jazakumullah khair for coming. And as said, <clears throat> renew your intentions. We are here in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we seek knowledge, when we come to seek knowledge and acquire more knowledge about the divine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as mentioned in the hadith, even the fish in the sea, seeks forgiveness for the ones who seek knowledge because they're happy with what they're doing. So when you go outside and in the ocean and you see some fish, Jazakumullah khair for making istighfar for me. Even the fish in the sea is asking Allah to forgive us as we gather to seek more knowledge. The topic that was given to me today, messengers of the messenger. And subhanAllah, to be honest with you, up till this point, I have so many things. What should I be speaking about? Is it the messenger himself? The love of him? How to love him? What does the love of the messenger cause? Or should I speak about his messengers? People that actually loved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how that transformed them. Or should I be speaking about something practical like a salatu ala nabi? What does it mean? All of those are things I wanted to speak about. So I begin with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with some verses from the Quran describing what I want to be speaking about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Jum'ah says يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكُ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ Everything in the heavens and the earth, everything around you, the trees, the birds, everything is in a state of praise. Praising Allah, praising our Lord. Tasbih, you know what tasbih means when we say subhanallah you know when you see something amazing, what do you say? Wow, right? Muslims, when you see something that's amazing, something that's flawless, you say, Subhanallah, Allah is exalted, this is so wonderful. It's an expression of amazement. The heavens and the earth is amazed at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way He creates is amazing. He gives by depriving, He deprives by giving, He raises to lower, He lowers to raise. Amazing! Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does wonderful things. I was giving some brothers and sisters the example, this piece of food in front of me. If I was to bang my hand like that and get an apple out of it, what are you going to say? Nothing? Amazing, that would be a miracle, right? So if somebody does that, brings an apple or a banana from a piece of food, it's amazing. Outside, Allah does that every day. Trees grow, grow from dirt. And from it, a piece of food comes bananas and comes apples and comes oranges. When I see that, I say, Subhanallah, the way he created. When people tell us scientifically, we know the, how the creation started. The Big Bang, right? And you tell them, so what happened? They tell you, well, there was this uh, nothing and there was a single point and then there was an explosion. Right? And then you have everything around. I say, wait, so what did you say? There was what? An explosion. I tell them, well, I come from the Middle East and I know a lot about explosions. <laughs> explosions don't bring any order. They create big mess. So you mean to tell me everything around me came from an explosion? You know what that means? You know, like if, you, if I, in front of you, got two plates. Imagine that, two glass plates. And I bang them in each other in front of you. And down falls nice teacups and nice spoons and you're going to be saying what how on earth did you do that it is amazing so you mean to tell me allah brought this order from an explosion i bear witness that allah is very capable to bring every atom into a guided explosion so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one that does wonderful things he in surah al-jum'ah tells us about one of his biggest miracles, one of his biggest favors on mankind, one of the fastest ways for us to reach him. 
And he mentions after this verse, explaining that everything is praising him in the heavens and the earth. He says, Huwa, it was him, the one that does all those things. Huwa, الذي بعث في الأميين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة. It was him that sent among the unlettered people, the ones that know, knew nothing, people in Arabia, a man, one person, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from amongst themselves, reciting to them his verses, purifying them, changing them from inside, guiding them, teaching them knowledge, showing them wisdom. What is Allah saying here? One of the biggest miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the biggest miracles of this deen of ours, of this religion that we hold, one of the miracles that is still living up till today is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Allah, at back in the time, there is the Persian Empire, there is the Roman Empire, great civilization. In the midst, in a desert, in Arabia, there is a group of people, Bedouins, tribes, fighting each other. No civilization, no knowledge, ignorant. They would fight 40 years over a camel race. They would bury their daughters alive, thinking that this is something honorable to do. When they worshipped Allah around the Kaaba, they used to worship naked. And instead of reciting anything, they used to clap their hands. They are worthless. Nobody wanted to occupy Arabia. Those people, if you will, hopeless. You know nowadays, when you go in the ghettos, Los Angeles, you know what I'm speaking about downtown Dallas and you see gangs and drug problems and that's how it was in Arabia. What would you say if I tell you there was one man that went by himself in downtown LA? Ten years, he made it better than Irvine. You say, what? How did he do that? How? That is what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. He went to people worse than what we see now. No matter how low you think of yourself, he faced people lower than that and he transformed them. The miracle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his ability to transform others. He changed them not from outside only, from inside. The same people that were nothing in 23 years, they overpowered the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire. In 24 years, they were all the way from China, all the way till, till Morocco. How did they do that? And here's the question, what was the casualties? To do this, to bring this civilization, what, what do you know the loss? Because some people say Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he fought wars. Yeah, but you know the total number of casualties. To to do this on both sides, if you open the books of Sirah and you started reading and you counted the casualties on both sides, the total number of people that died in all the battles, all the expeditions of the Prophet, less than three thousand. When I see this. I look on what's going on in Iraq because I know a nation that said we are going to give them their freedom. We are going to better their lives. How many people died in Iraq? How is it? How many people died in Afghanistan? Did it change? When I see that, I say, Ashhadu annaka Rasulullah. I bear witness that you are the Prophet of Allah. But the biggest miracle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not buildings, was people, the way he transformed them, the way they changed. He brought people in front. His miracle is Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman ibn Affan, Ali ibn Abi Talib. His followers, they transformed people as well. Not only, they're not only great from outside, their morals, their ability to forgive. Subhanallah, I can give you example upon example. A man like Uthman ibn Affan, look at the way they worship. One night he goes in front of the Kaaba and he says, Allahu Akbar. And you know what he did? He prayed two rak'ahs through which he finished reciting the entire Quran. What? You finished reciting the entire Quran in two rak'ahs? Uh, many of us will say that's impossible. But I'll tell you something else. That's amazing. I look at this and say this is amazing. But it, one of the students of the students of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Imam Abu Hanifa, he goes one night, Allahu Akbar, and he starts reciting. The entire night, he prays with one verse. What? Can you imagine a person praying the entire night with just one verse, reciting it and crying, reciting it and crying? What kind of worship is that? Those are the, those are the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Their manners, the way he transformed them from inside, 
I, I gave an example, Zain al Abidin. One time he was walking and a person spit in his face. If, if you're walking outside and a person said you're a Muslim, yes, and he spits in your face, what are you going to do? I know some of the brothers, they are going to spit back, right? Al Ayn of Al Ayn, right? So here is Zain al Abidin, the descendant of the Prophet, the son of Imam al Hussein, the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Somebody spits and he tells me, and the al Abidin, yes, and he spits in his face. You know what he said? He looked to him and he said the following, Haddathani Abi, my father told me, Imam al Hussein, that his father told him, Imam Ali, and Nariq al Mu'min Tiryaq, the saliva of the believer is a cure, and I see cure in your saliva. When he did that, the man cried and he said, Ashhadu an Nakara ibn Rasulullah, I bear witness that you are the son or the descendant of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The, the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam changed them from inside. Compassion from inside that enabled them, empowered them to change the harshest of views against them. Those are the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Their dealings with each other is amazing. They look in a very simple way. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was born, we know from the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was born in the outside world, fires, the fire of Persia, that people worshipped for thousands of years, got extinguished. Idols fell in their face. Light came out that his mother said, I could see the palaces of Syria from that light. Similarly, if the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is born in the hearts of his followers, the fires of passion, the fires of anger inside of me that has been raving for thousands of years can get extinguished. The idols of whims and views and philosophies will fall on their face. The darkness I live in, the clouds that veil me will disperse and I can see clearly. The love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the thing that we need to carry. It's the thing that his messengers carried to other people as well. I'll give you a simple example. There was this man, a scholar by the name of Abu Madian. And Abu Madian was a great scholar called al Junaid, al -Junaid of the West. Great scholar of the Skiat al-Nafs. But another scholar differed with him and he got upset. And he started to say bad things about Abu Madian. And one of the students of Abu Madian got yani, offended. How do you say that about my teacher? I love him so much. So he started to answer back. He started to reply, angry. And one night, that student of Abu Madian sees a dream. And in that dream, he sees the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh, how long do I long for seeing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even in a dream. And the man was excited. Oh, Prophet of Allah. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that dream asked him, about that person that you are fighting against. Why? He said, don't you know, O Prophet of Allah? Don't you see what he's saying about Abu Madian? Don't you see? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him this question. Does he love me? Does he love me? And he said, yes. So he told him, wasn't that enough for you to love him? And the man cried and he woke up. What a teacher, he says. And he goes to that man, giving him gifts, telling him, I saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the man cried and he said, what I said about Abu Madian is wrong. And immediately went to Abu Madian and he said, his forg the love of Prophet Muhammad unites us. Everyone sitting here, uh, do you say La ilaha illallah? Do you say Muhammad Rasulullah? By the love of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I love you. We learn to love. His love unites the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look, even the ability to forgive, the ability to pardon. I, I'll narrate for you a hadith narrated by Anas ibn Malik, one that served the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Something that empowers us. Anas ibn Malik, the one that loved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much, he's narrated to have said, and subhanallah, in this hadith, we look at the following aspect. What made the Prophet laugh? What made the Prophet cry? To know someone, you need to... What makes them laugh? What makes them cry? And he narrates a hadith that as they were sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he smiled. 
You know when you're sitting with someone and the thought comes and you smile? You know my son, when he smiles, I know what's going to happen. It means something bad is going to happen to his sister. <laughs> what makes you smile? You know when you're sitting and all of a sudden, what is a thought that comes to your head and you smile? So when the Prophet smiled, immediately, and look at the companions, Umar ibn al-Khattab, immediately, Oh Prophet of Allah, what made you smile? Eager to know. He wants to know what makes him smile. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in that hadith said, I saw the day of judgment. And it was judgment day. And I saw two people among my ummah, jithiyan, on their knees in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them oppressed the other. And it was time now for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to judge. And he was saying, Ya Allah, he oppressed me. He oppressed me. Give me some of his hasanat. Give me some of his good deeds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the other guy, give him some of your good deeds. And he says, oh Allah, I have no good deeds remaining. And if I give him any, what will I do? So the man says, Ya Allah, let him take some of my sins. Let take away some of the evil things from my scale. Put it on him. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he said that, he cried. Tears went from his eyes. Why? Compassion. His love for this ummah. Tears went from his eyes. I say this hadith, I see no tears in my eyes. Am I following Muhammad? I might be following him outwardly. My heart is not where his heart is. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues. And the man was in this distress. If I take some of his sins, I'll go to hellfire. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that is a great day. That's a great day when people will need every ounce of good deeds. But then, Allah himself tells both of them, raise your head up. And they look up. And Allah removes the veil. And they can see right through paradise. And they see wonderful houses and palaces. And they say, Ya Allah, to whom does that belong? Who owns this? What a Nabi? What prophet? What righteous person owns this? And God, Allah says, the one that can pay the price. And they say, who owns the price of this? And he looks to that man and he says, you own it. How? He said, if you pardon your brother. Oh Allah, I pardon, I pardon. And Allah says, take your brother by the hand and both of you go to Jannah together hand in hand. The Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when the Prophet said that, he smiled and he said, do pardon each other. Do forgive each other for Allah pardons and forgives. Our ability to pardon our ability to forgive, our good manners stem from reflecting the light of Nubuwa, the light of prophethood, the lights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I see Allah, if I know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it unlocks the keys of forgiveness from my heart. It changes me. And I want to continue. He is amazing. Everything he did is amazing. When Aisha radiallahu anha, she was asked, Umm al mumineen the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell us about something that's amazing about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I, I feel the same way. And you know what she said? Ev what should I say? Everything about him was amazing. Every single thing is amazing. And she said, one night, he came and his skin touched my skin. And he told me, Aisha, can I seek your permission that night to stand and pray the entire night between the hands of my Lord? And look at her response. O oh, Prophet of Allah, oh, what a response was that. I love you and I love what you love. I love you and I love what you love. How many of us can say that today? When we love someone, it changes us. Al Junaid said about love, هي دخول صفات المحبوب على المحب على البدل. Love is when the attributes of the one that you love comes and changes your own attributes. I say I love Imam Siraj Wahaj and I love the fact that I love him. I love Salah. I love the fact that I love Salah. Can you say that about your wife? I love that I love you and I love the fact that I love you because I see the lights of Nubuwa in you. He teaches us how to love. Amazing. He changed people. They transformed society around them. Even the, there is a hadith that even things 
around are amazed. There is this hadith, Sahih hadith, that there was a Bedouin one day outside of the city of Medina, minding his own business, you know, with his sheep and stuff. And a wolf came. And the wolf grabbed one of his sheep. And the Bedouin got upset. Ya Oh wolf, my sheep. And he decides to run after him. And he ran after the wolf. And all of a sudden, the wolf dropped the sheep, turned back, looked at the man, sat on its tail, according to the hadith, and then looked up to the eyes of that man, that Bedouin, and, to, and told him in Arabic, spoke in Arabic, Ya hadha taqillah, rizq saqahu Allahu ilayh. Have taqwa of Allah, a provision that Allah gave to me. You want to take it away from me? So the man said, Ya al hajab amazing, amazing, a talking wolf, a wolf that speaks Arabic. If you were to go outside that building and you see a raccoon, a cat, and the cat says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. <laughs> CNN would be here, Fox News would be here, a talking cat. A, ta a cat that talks Arabic, amazing. So the man said, amazing, unbelievable, a wolf that talks. And the wolf replies, shouldn't I tell you about something more amazing? And he said, what? What is more amazing than a talking wolf? He said, you, you over there. You minding your own business, taking care of the sheep, and behind you in Medina, behind those palm trees, is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling people about the matters of this deen and the year after. And you are busy with this sheep overgoing and sitting with him. Amazing. The creation is amazed at us, even Muslims. What kept me away from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What kept, when Allah sends a rahmah, a rahmah, rahmah lil'alameen, mercy and compassion to mankind, did I have this compassion in my heart? Did I take it in my heart? What is keeping me from going and learning from him, my teacher? So I can be merciful to humanity as a whole, so I can follow the footsteps of his followers, so that we can change humanity. And I'll tell you this, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said what amazes him. I told you what amazes me. The companions are amazing. The followers of Muhammad amazes me. The creation is amazed at us, not knowing him. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day among his companions, he said the following, asking them, which among the believers you see the most amazing? And the companions answered an answer that besuits them. They said the angels. They pray day and night. They worship Allah. They never sin. Look at where their eyes were. The Prophet said, How can they become amazing believers while they are with their Lord? So they said, uh, the Prophets. The Prophets are amazing. Nuh, 900 years of patience. Uh, Isa, Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh, the, uh, Ayyub, Prophet Ayyub and his amazing people. He said, How can they become amazing people? What revelation? Angels talk to them, they're given revelation. So they said, We, the companions, we are amazing. And he said, How can you be amazing people while I, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, am among you? So they said, Who, O Prophet of Allah? He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Qawmun Yatuna min Bahdi, La Yajiduna illa Sufufan, Yakraunah, Ayuminun. The really amazing people or people that are going to come after me that find nothing but scripts. They read it and they believe. They are believing. They are amazing. Here am I telling you about how amazing the companions are. And here is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam telling the companions how amazing you are. That you in the West cannot, even some of us cannot read Arabic, yet we read the Quran. And after we read the Quran, we believe. That is amazing. I want to tell us maybe two things before I close. I already took more than the time and I didn't even go into my points. Two things I would like to mention. One example of people that follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and how he can be a change. And the second thing, which is, I think is more important, how to relate to him. And I'll tell you this hadith that I find amazing about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He suffered. 
He suffered a lot to deliver this message. You know what they said about him. You know when, they, when he lost his child, they made fun of him to hurt him. You know what they did to him when, they made, when he made sujood, they threw things on his back. You know what he suffered through in the battle of Uhud, when they came to fight him and he was fighting. And you know what happened in this battle of Uhud, when people, he was exposed and they throw stones on him and the stone hits his, his, his lips and blood comes out. If a person throws stones at me, what would I say? And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what came from his heart is the following. How can people that do that to their prophet ever attain success? O oh Allah, guide my people for they know not. O oh Allah, forgive my people for they know not. Compassion and love came out from him. Another person comes and he hits him, Abdullah ibn Qamiya, hits him with the sword on the helmet. And the helmet enters into his face, into his bones. And he falls and he says, Khudha wa ana ibn Qamiya. He was shown hatred in the battle of Uhud. After the battle, the bodies of his companions were mutilated. How would you feel if you go into a masjid and you find brothers and sisters with noses cut and ears cut? That's what they did. The companions couldn't take it. And they said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, curse them. Curse them, O oh, Prophet of Allah. ya Rasulullah. And in that situation, he said, Lam wa inna ma I was not sent to curse mankind. I was sent as a mercy to mankind. Compassion. But here is the thing I want you to relate to. He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, passed through many difficult situations. Many difficult situations. And he told us about this hadith. He said, لكل نبي دعوة مستجابة. For every prophet, there is a dua through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would respond to. تحجل بها الأنبياء من قبلي. Other prophets, they hastened with it. Nuh made dua. And Allah responded, Sulaiman made dua. And he said, وأردت أن أختبئ دعوتي شفاعة لأمتي. And I choose to hold back on this dua that Allah would answer. Why? So that I can use it to make intercession for my ummah on the day of judgment. He didn't say, oh Allah, I need food. Oh Allah, make Mecca mu'min. He realized that his dua, there are people that are going to need it the most. Who are they? The companions say, كنا نمسك على الاستغفار حتى سمعنا رسول الله يستغفر we use not to seek forgiveness for people that make major sins. One of you might be sitting here and say, not me, brother. I, I do terrible things. I slip. I do horrible things. The love of Muhammad is for you. This is how you relate to him. Because he said, the companion said, we use not to ask for forgiveness. We were so shy for people that do major sins. Till we heard the Prophet say, I made my intercession on the day of judgment for the people who of major sins among my ummah. Do you know what that means? When I slip, when I do something haram, if I have something in my life that I'm ashamed to tell other people, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose to go hungry, chose to suffer. Bilal was tortured. So he saved his dua, so it is you that he had in mind. When my heart sees this, I can't help but say, which I will finish with, this Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Muhammad. My heart now, I want to give him something. And he, to Allah taught us how. You say the following, Oh Allah, I can't do anything for Muhammad. Oh Allah, you send your peace and blessing to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When we do that, and I finish with this, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna lillahi malaikatan sayyaheen yubalighunani an ummati salam. Allah has angels roaming around. When one of you sends salam to me, the angels deliver it to me. Do you know what that means? Do you know how I can use this? If I slip, if I do something haram, if I'm unable to pray the night, I go and I say, now I see the Prophet of Allah. The people like me that cannot do, it is us that he wants to intercede for us. And then I start sending peace and blessings unto him. Oh Allah, you send your peace and blessings. And when I'm doing it, I imagine my salam reaches him. If the Prophet was to enter from this door, will you greet him? How will you greet him? Salaamu Alaikum. This is how I do Salah and Salam on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this, the love of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sending more Salah on him will change my life. It's a connection between me and him. My Salah and Salam reaches him. The love of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam can transform me, by which I can transform the world. Let me become a mirror. Let my heart become a mirror. 
And let me direct it to Muhammad and to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me reflect the light of Muhammad and the light of Allah to the creation of Allah.